the first day of your cruise is arguably the most important day of your cruise. So I've got the most important tips you need to know about boarding day. Here we go. Hey everyone, it's Matt from RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com. Embarkation Day is the start of a new cruise and it's filled with excitement and energy and a lot of anticipation after months and months, maybe even years of planning a cruise. But the boarding day experience has changed over the last couple of years and with different requirements and Royal Caribbean policy changes, what should you do on the first day of your Royal Caribbean cruise to have an amazing time? I wanted to tackle this because if you hear me share tips and secrets here on this channel, I've often talked about the importance of doing certain things on the first day of the cruise. So today, I want to talk about what you should expect from when you wake up the morning of embarkation day until you really get on board the ship and are ready and settled in. So we're going to go through the whole process here to tell you the most important things you should be doing on the first day of your cruise. Number one, this actually starts well before the first day of your cruise, and that is due to the online check-in as early as possible. So Royal Caribbean will allow you to do the online check-in up to 45 days before your sailing. This allows you to not only just enter information about yourself to save you time in the cruise terminal, but it gives you the most important thing possible, which is a check-in time. Yes, your check-in time does matter. We'll talk about that a little later in this video, but to get the earliest check-in time, get it exactly 45 days before your sailing. If you do it through the Royal Caribbean app instead of the website, you can actually grab a check-in time without doing any of the other check-in process. You can go back to it later and do the rest of it, which you should, but most importantly, you want to get that early check-in time. A lot of people ask me if they should get the key for a variety of reasons, but chief among them to get an early check-in time. And if you check in 45 days before you're sailing, you won't need the key because you're going to have one of the earliest check-in times, which is usually around somewhere between 10, 30, 11 o'clock in the morning, something like that. But do your online check-in as early as possible, and then make sure you finish the rest of it before your cruise. Because basically, when you get to that morning of your sailing, you want to make sure that you've done everything in the app. All the time you take to do the online check-in beforehand in the app will save you time in the cruise terminal. I can't emphasize this enough, how important it is, because it's your vacation time. I would rather be spending time on board the ship having a good time rather than standing in the cruise terminal doing things I could have done when I was at work or in the evening sometimes sitting on the couch. Do yourself a favor, do the online check-in as early as possible. All right, so what should you do next? Well, definitely fill out the health questionnaire the day before the cruise. The final step of that check-in process in the Royal Caribbean app is a day beforehand to fill out some health questionnaire items. Again, you could do this in the cruise terminal when they go through this, but rather than have the person checking you in go through each single person in your party and ask them the same questions, you can do it via the app a lot faster. Fill out the health questionnaire. It's pretty straightforward. And the nice thing about cruising here in 2023 is that a lot of the questions that used to be in here are no longer the case. And depending on your sailing, where you're sailing from, a lot of the COVID questions that were in here before are no longer required. Now, I don't want to go off here and make generalizations about protocols because they do differ depending on where you sail from. But as of the recording of this video, being vaccinated and having a pre-COVID test are no longer required for cruises out of North America. And so when you're going on a cruise now in 2023, there's a good chance the health questionnaire is more of a mere formality than what it used to be in the last couple of years. Regardless of that fact, fill out the health questionnaire the day before the cruise. So that way you've got that all set up. Number three, you want to pack the important items in your carry-on. So whether you're coming from your hotel or your house and you're going to the cruise terminal, before you leave, have a carry-on bag that has the most important things in there. What should you have in there, Matt? Well, that's a great question. You should have your passport, your birth certificate, any identification, travel documents. You want to have all that in your carry-on bag. You want to carry your cash in there, your wallet, basically. Maybe that's in your pocket. Maybe it's in your purse. Maybe it's in your carry-on bag, whatever. That stuff should be there. Medication, any important, especially prescription medication, should be in your carry-on bag. You should also put in there maybe some things for the first day of the cruise before your luggage is ready in your cabin. Things like a bathing suit, because did you know that the pools and water slides and all those fun activities are open on embarkation day and a lot of other people don't have their bathing suits with them. So if you have it with you in your carry-on, when you get on board the ship later on, you can change into that bathing suit and enjoy those facilities without much of a wait at all. It's actually one of the best times ever to enjoy time at the pool or the water slides because the lines are the shortest on embarkation day. 
Number four is to arrive at your check-in time for the cruise terminal. So that time that you got for check-in that we did 45 days beforehand is the time you're going to arrive at the cruise terminal. It's okay if you arrive a little bit early for that, especially if you're parking a car. I mean, that's going to take you time to park the car and do all those things. But you want to adhere to the time that you signed up for because depending on the port, they can really strictly or not so strictly enforce it. But it's a really good idea to make sure that you show up to the port at your scheduled check-in time. Again, this is your check-in time not your boarding time. They're not the same thing. So if your check-in time is noon and you arrive at 11.15 a.m., you probably will be allowed to board. But if your check-in time isn't until 2 p.m. and you arrive at 10 a.m., you might have to be waiting around a while. So the, the best idea is to make sure you adhere to your time so there's no issues at all. Next up, be sure to drop off your luggage with the porters. When you arrive at the cruise terminal on embarkation day, Leave your luggage with the porters. I really can't recommend this enough. Take a small carry-on bag, of course, with you on the ship, but leave the bigger luggage with the porters. It never ceases to amaze me the people that lug their own luggage on board the ship and then are saddled with it until their cabins are ready. Bags will be delivered to your stateroom later in the day, so you won't have to worry about lugging your big suitcase or duffel bag around the ship. Now, yes, it is customary to give the small tip for each bag you leave with the porters. How much? a dollar or two per bag. It's really not a lot to ask for in order to have a lot of that weight literally taken off your shoulders or back or wherever you're lugging that suitcase around from. It's just so much easier. Do yourself a favor and drop off the luggage with the porters. Something you can be doing during the morning, especially when you're driving over to the cruise terminal, is to complete Muster 2.0. So if you cruise back in the day, when I say back in the day, pre-2020, you may recall the old days of the muster drill in which at some point during the cruise, everything shut down and you had to go to your muster station. Those days are gone. You don't have to do that anymore. Royal Caribbean now has a new e-muster system in which basically you go through the Royal Caribbean app on embarkation day and complete much of the process. So my recommendation is if you have some downtime, again, you're driving to the cruise terminal, you're waiting in the cruise terminal, you're at lunch, complete the muster station process by going in the Royal Caribbean app and filling out the process. There's three basic steps. Number one is to watch the safety video on your phone. Number two is to listen to the emergency signal. And then when you have all that done, all you have to do for step number three is go to your muster station at some point in the afternoon, check in, they'll confirm that you know where it is, and that's it. Super simple. Now, you could do the muster drill really at any time from your phone. You could do that later on in the day. My thought is to do that while you have a little bit of downtime. Again, driving to the terminal, waiting in the terminal. These are times in which you got nothing else to do, so you may as well take advantage of doing it. And yes, you can complete steps one and two of the e-muster drill at any time on embarkation day, including even before you board the ship. So that's why I recommend taking advantage of that downtime if you have it. And if not, if you're too busy, things are moving really, really quickly and you don't have that time, that's okay too. You can do the musters process at some other point in that morning or early afternoon. Just don't forget about it because there's usually announcements reminding guests to do that muster drill process. Don't be that person who forgets about it. Get it taken care of. And then once you're on the ship, you can go right to your muster station. Make sure that you confirm that you're there. They check you in and it's going to be super easy and quick. So you're on board the ship now. What is the first thing you should do? Actually, it's to make specialty restaurant reservations. These days, more and more people are booking specialty restaurants, even more so than before 2020. Since cruises restarted in 2021, there has been a renowned emphasis on specialty dining. I think a lot of people are just simply saying, YOLO, book it. We're going to take advantage of being on a cruise and we're going to splurge and do specialty dining. So if you have a dining package, you absolutely want to make specialty restaurant reservations as soon as you get on board. The best way to do this is number one, have a list of days and times and restaurants you want to eat at before you ever get on board the ship. My recommendation is to do this in the days or weeks leading up to your cruise. You know, just sit on the couch, talk it over, come up with a list. Like day one, we want to eat dinner at this restaurant. Day two at this restaurant and pick ballpark times. Once you have that list, when you get on board the ship, you can go to any specialty restaurant and book any other specialty restaurant. So if you're going to Chop's Grill, you can not only make a reservation for Chop's Grill, but you can also make a reservation for any other specialty restaurant there and they can help you out. That's a huge benefit. In addition, when you're boarding the ship, you may see a stand on the Royal Promenade or in the Royal Centrum in which there's a crew member there and there's usually a sign like specialty restaurant reservations, something like that. They can also make reservations for you there. The bottom line is you want to be proactive. If you have a dining package, my best advice is to make reservations on the first day of the cruise. Don't wait. It's not to say you couldn't get a reservation later on, but the best times, especially if you want a dinner time between, say, 6 and 
8 o'clock p.m., you're going to want to make the reservations on the first day. And I really do think it's most important to do so as soon as you get on board the ship. One specialty restaurant that you may have to make a special trip for in order to book would be Izumi Hibachi. Izumi Hibachi is super popular. People love the teppanyaki style down, including myself. And for reservations there, depending on the ship, you may have to go to the restaurant itself in order to make a reservation. Don't worry, they'll let you know if you have to do that. But get your reservations done as soon as you get on board. That's super important. Number two, once you have the dining set, the next thing you want to do is open up the Royal Caribbean app and connect to the Royal Caribbean Wi-Fi. It's okay if you don't have an internet package. You don't need it in order to use the Royal Caribbean app. When you connect to the Wi-Fi, it'll give you two options. Do you have a package or do you just want to use the app and whichever one you want to use, use. But get on the Wi-Fi so that way you can book the shows via the Royal Caribbean app. So this isn't available on every single ship, but if you're on a ship that has the ability to pre-book entertainment via the Royal Caribbean app, you absolutely want to do this. This is definitely the case for Royal Caribbean's Oasis and Quantum Class ships. Booking a reservation for a show is complimentary. There's no cost to do so. And there's also, by the way, no obligation to actually show up for the show. It's, it's a good idea that you go to the show that you book. But that being said, it's to your advantage to make a reservation. And in a lot of cases, you can't book reservations until you actually get on board the ship. Some ships actually do allow you to pre-book entertainment via the website before the cruise. So again, if you're selling on one of the newer ships, check the cruise planner on Royal Caribbean's website for that ability. And it really is important to try to book that as early as you can. I know we're talking about embarkation day, but it's a good idea to check for entertainment availability. I would say 60 and 45 days before your cruise to see if there's anything there. Now, if you get on board the ship and there's no availability for reservations for shows or maybe your ship is one of those that you could have pre-booked entertainment and everything's sold out already. Does that mean you can't see the shows? No, absolutely not. There will be standby lines for every single show. If you arrive to the showtime, I would say 15 to 20 minutes before the showtime, you're going to have a pretty good chance of being able to get in there because there's a lot of no-shows for those reservations. The downside to having free reservations for shows is that the flakiness of some guests is pretty apparent because they didn't spend any money to make the reservation. There's no penalty for not showing up. So for a lot of people, they make a reservation, you know, oh, I want to go see the show. And then they're having a great time at a bar or by the pool. And they're like, ah, forget it. We're not going. So there's always an opportunity for no shows and to be able to go with there in a standby line. So don't feel like if you don't get a reservation, you can't do it. But pre-booking is super important. One more thing about pre-booking. If you're on a ship that has signature activities that require pre-booking, like North Star or Ripcord by iFly, or Zone Zero, you definitely want to pre-book these. This is actually super important because they will sell very quickly via the Royal Caribbean app. So make sure you do that. And it's actually not a bad idea if one of you is doing especially restaurant reservations, someone else in the party can be booking the shows via the app. Again, a good idea before the cruise is to have a ballpark idea of days and times you want to do these kinds of things. Next up, really important, have lunch. You deserve it at this point. You've done the most important things, I think, at this point. You've crossed the barrier of like super critical, and now we're going to move to just like good to do and important things to do. But the most important thing is have lunch. Certainly on your Royal Caribbean ship, there'll be a couple different options for lunch on the first day of your cruise. Certainly the most preeminent option, the most popular option is the Windjammer, the Windjammer Marketplace. It's the complimentary buffet. Most people go here because it just has a lot of options. And it seems to work for most people. Now, there are going to be a good alternatives for Embarkation Day for lunch. And this will depend on the ship you're sailing on. But places like Park Cafe, Solarium Bistro, maybe even especially a restaurant. Did you know if you have a dining package, you can actually elect to go to a specialty restaurant that is open on Embarkation Day. And it would be included with your dining package. Again, you have to check with your dining package as to which allocation you have. But if you have the unlimited dining package as an example, you can absolutely go to a specialty restaurant for lunch and enjoy your time there. All right, number 10 on my list is to confirm your main dining room reservation. So if you have my time dining or you just want to see what table assignment you have or really any concern about the main dining room, this is a good time to head down there and double check all those things. The main dining room will be open for not only reservations for folks that have my time, which by the way, if you have my time dining, make reservations. It's to your advantage. You'll have a shorter wait to do so. But no matter what your issue is, I'm just using this as a global catch-all for main dining room stuff. Go to the main dining room in the early afternoon, like one o'clock noontime. It's a really good opportunity for that. Number 11, sign your kids up for Adventure Ocean. So Adventure Ocean is the complimentary kids programming on board. And they have an open house on the first day of the cruise, usually right around one o'clock p.m. until a couple hours in. And basically, this is an opportunity to sign your kids up and meet the staff. This is really helpful if you have questions, obviously, about the Adventure Ocean process. But also, it's a really good opportunity for your kids to meet the staff members, see the space, and get to kind of, you know, preview 
what it's all about. A lot of kids and their parents, admittedly, have some apprehension about Adventure Ocean. It's kind of a new thing, especially if you're new to cruising, but this program is super helpful, a lot of fun for kids, and I really feel like getting up there to be able to visualize it all and see what it's all about is truly helpful. Not only that, signing up on the first day means you're not going to waste time later on in the evening session when Adventure Ocean is open trying to sign your kids up. It's a lot easier to do this on the first day in the afternoon, so get up there and take advantage of that. And the last really important thing that you should do on the first day of your cruise is meet your stateroom attendant. So later on in the afternoon, I'd say around 2, 3 o'clock usually, the stateroom attendants are coming out there. So it's a really good idea when you get in your cabin, number one, look around your cabin, inspect it, look for anything that is you know out of the ordinary or something that's maybe not functioning correctly so you can alert them to it, but also meet your cabin attendant to let them know any preferences you have. Do you need extra towels? Would you like to have ice in your cabin every day? Any special requests, maybe opening up a balcony divider. If there's a crib that's supposed to be in your cabin and it's not there, you can ask for that. Again, meeting your cabin attendant on the first day is super important. And sometimes they can get busy, you can get busy, and it's easy to miss each other on the first day of the cruise. But I would say it's a really good idea to make an effort, usually when you're unpacking your stuff anyway, in your cabin and meet your cabin attendant for any kind of issues that may pop up or just simply a friendly hello. That's also nice. Not everything has to be terrible and like, oh no, what if I have problems? No. Sometimes it's really nice to just get to know your cabin attendant and be able to meet them and just put a face to the name because, again, they'll be taking care of you during your sailing. So there you have it, my 2023 boarding day cruise ship tips that you should know about if you're going on a Royal Caribbean cruise this year. Again, this is about the important, critical things to take care of. There's lots more you should be doing on Embarkation Day, like having a good time. Have that Embarkation Day cocktail. Go play mini golf. Take a nap. Enjoy time at the pool. There's lots of fun things to do. I don't want this to seem like an overbearing military operation that you need to conduct on the first day. This is all about setting you up for an amazing cruise the rest of your sailing. And I think a little bit of effort on day one can really pay dividends as your cruise progresses throughout the rest of the sailing. Let me know in the comments below what tips would you share for the first day of your cruise and what are the most important do's and don'ts for the first day of your sailing. Let me know in the comments down there below. If you found this video helpful, hit the like button, subscribe to our channel, and turn on notifications. That way, YouTube lets you know we have a brand new video to share. This has been Matt from RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com, and we'll talk again real soon.